Today, we're diving into a common headache for remote workers and IT professionals, fixing common remote desktop connection problems. If you've ever been frustrated by connection issues while trying to access a remote computer, this video is for you. Let's get started. Step 1. Verify Login Credentials When facing RDP connection failures, the first thing you need to do is to verify whether the credentials are correct or not. First, make sure the username and password are copied right. It happens when you copy and paste a password into the password field, a white space is copied along with the password. This will cause logon errors. You can click this button to check whether the password is correct. Second, check if the Windows security settings disabled non-admin users to log in. If you want to allow non-admin users to use RDP, you need to log in as admin and modify this policy first. Log in as an administrator. Press Win plus R to open the Run dialog box. Type GPEDIT MSC and press Enter. This will open the Local Group Policy Editor. In the Local Group Policy Editor, go to Computer Configuration. Then, select Security Settings and choose Local Policies. Locate and click on User Rights Assignment. In the right-hand pane, find and double-click on Allow Log On Through Remote Desktop Services. Next, click the Add User or Group button. Type the names of the non-administrative users or groups you want to grant RDP access to. Third, make sure the IP and port are correct. The default RDP port number for Windows servers is 3389. As the default port is frequently targeted by ransomware attacks, it's sometimes been changed to a custom one. In this case, you should add a colon in the port number to the end of the IP address as this. Step 2. Check the service status. When your database smart hosting service is suspended or cancelled for some reason, you will not be able to connect to your server. Therefore, make sure that your hosting service is active. At Database Mart, you can log in to your billing account and check the service status. Step 3. Verify that the remote server is turned on. You can see if the server is turned on through a control panel that is used to manage your server. Database Mart provides free control panels such as SolidCP and IPMI. You can refer to the following guidance to reboot the servers by yourself. For VPS, please refer to this tutorial. For a dedicated server, please refer to this tutorial. You can also contact the hosting provider to restart the server for you. Step 4. Check if both IPs are blocked. When you are using a remote server that is not from your own country, then it could result in RDP failures if your IP address or the server IP address is blocked by national firewall rules set by either of the countries. You can check if the server IP is blocked from any country by visiting this site. Simply enter an IP and see which countries are blocking it. Ideally, the loss percent column shows 0% for each location and mostly solid green bars in the chart column. Step 5. Test the network. Open a command prompt, enter ping, and your IP. If you get this result when ping the server IP address, it means that the network configuration is correct. If something goes wrong, you can contact your hosting provider for help. If the ping request has timed out or worked, please continue using the telnet command to test the RDP or SSH connection. Type in telnet and your IP plus port. If it works, you will see the following output. If you get the connect failed error, please contact your hosting provider for assistance. That's a wrap for today's Tech Troubleshooters episode. We hope these tips help you resolve common remote desktop connection problems. If you like our video, please give us a like and follow us for more exciting content. Don't forget to leave a comment.